Lesson 22, Dividing Fractions. Dividing fractions makes absolutely no sense to kids, and that's why we have this demo to make it more concrete for them. Let's get started. We're going to go through a series of three division problems that we're going to model and solve. The first one is 6 divided by 2. We already know the answer to that, but let's model it first so that we can understand the logic behind the lesson. So here I have two index cards, and we're going to punch six holes into them to show 6 divided by 2. Here's my hole punch, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can see here, each card has three holes punched in them. So 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Simple enough, let's go to the next one. Here we have 6 divided by 3. So I'll take 3 index cards right here and we'll punch the same 6 holes into them to show 6 divided by 3. Here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can see here, each card has two holes punched in them. 2, 2, and 2. So 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Finally, we have 6 divided by 1 half. So let's go ahead and do that. Here is an index card, but I actually don't need the whole thing. According to the problem, I only need half of an index card. So I'll take this and I'll fold it in half. And we're going to punch the same six holes to show six divided by one half. Here we go. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. And here's the question though. When you do division, you're trying to figure out how many you have in each whole group. The problem is, this is not a whole index card. It's only half of an index card. So how do you find out how many punches we have if we had the whole card? And what you would do is instead of folding it in half, you'd open it up. So when you open it up, you end up with 12 punches. So 6 divided by 1 half equals 12. Now that we've seen the problem demoed, let's figure out how to solve it on paper. So here we have 6 divided by 1 half equals 12. And to help students understand the logic, I'll ask them, remember how we learned earlier that you can take any number, divide it by 1, and you'll end up with the same value? And they say yes, that they remember that. So let's go ahead and do that here. We'll take the 6, divide it by 1, because it'll give you the same value. And we'll take that 12, divide that by 1, because that'll give you the same value as well. And what we've done is we've turned this into three separate fractions. It's getting a little messy, so let's rewrite it. Here we have 6 over 1 divided by 1 half equals 12 over 1. And now I have students tell me where these numbers are coming from. So where did this 12 come from? And they realize, oh, you can do 6 times 2, and that'll give you 12. Then I'll ask, where did this 1 come from? And they'll say, you can take this 1, multiply it by the 1 here, and that'll give you 1. So the rule is, take the number on top, multiply by the number on the bottom, put it on top, take the number on the bottom, multiply by the number on top, put it on the bottom. Way too confusing. So this is where I tell students that from now on, they no longer have to divide by fractions. And they'll often go, yay! But then I'll explain that you still have to find the answer, and they'll often go, aww. So I explain that we're just going to do it in an easier way. And they often say, fine. The joys of teaching. So here's how we do it. Instead of dividing by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So let's rewrite the problem. 
here we have 6 over 1. But don't divide by a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. We're going to multiply and take 1 half and just flip it around to find the reciprocal. So write 2 over 1 instead of 1 over 2. Now it just becomes a simple multiplication problem which students are already good at. So here we have 6 times 2. That gives us 12. 1 times 1 gives us 1. And what is 12 divided by 1? That gives us 12. And you can see here that that answer is true.